Okay, in this video we're checking out the new Mamba F7 stacks, the mini and the full size. And before I get into the video, I obviously there's going to be a lot of complaints in the comments about the pricing. They're both coming in at uh, $79.99 or $80 each. And keep in mind that these are both F7s and they both have uh, D-Shot 1200 32-bit ESCs and more features than the uh, F4 versions of these stacks, which are, you know, roughly half the price, like $39 to $43, somewhere in there. So yeah, you're going to get a lot of complaints about that. And obviously, uh, I don't think a lot of people actually will need all the features of the F7s if you want the more UARTs and you don't want the inversion issues, that kind of thing, then obviously F7 is going to be for you, or if you want the 32-bit ESCs. But at the same time, most people will be totally fine with the F4 versions with the D-Shot 3, sorry, D-Shot 600 ESCs um, if you're looking for more of a budget build. Those are completely, totally fine for most people. These newer versions here are obviously meeting the needs of, you know, uh, people that are looking for more features, uh, more devices to attach like GPS, compass, etc. So this is not necessarily for everyone. That's why the you know, prices are more expensive. And I think the F7s are going to be generally a little bit more expensive for a little while because F4s are going to be around for quite a bit of while as well. Okay, so what we get in the box here, or basically I got to separate them right and left. So on the mini side here, I have you have the stack, you have some wires here. This is 18 gauge wire. You have a uh, the capacitor here, they're both the same on, on, on each of these. They're 470 microfarad, 35 volts, and you get a spare uh, connector that goes from the ESC to the flight controller, and they've switched this to silicon wire instead of the plastic wire. And then you do get some additional mounting stuff here, some uh, rubber O-rings or silicone O-rings and four uh, steel screws there for mounting if you want to mount via steel screws instead of the included uh, oh, I guess I guess they have a different kind of steel screw here it's a shorter one here so I guess the longer one here is if you want to be using a video transmitter as well now strangely uh, there's no XT30 in this one which is kind of strange I think it's possible they just didn't include it or it was uh, misplaced or something. Usually these will have the XT30, the mini ones, so I'm not sure exactly why that wasn't included in mine, but yeah, just letting you know that mine didn't come with that. And then we have the full-size stack here, uh, flight controller ESC, uh, same silicon rubber O-rings. This one did come with an XT60, and you do get some wire here. I think this is like, uh, looks like about 20 no, like maybe like a 16 gauge wire, I think. Yeah, and then you get a wiring limb for the 4-in-1 EC. Also, looks like it's been upgraded to silicon, and the same uh, 400 microfarad, 35 volt capacitor. And that's everything that you get on the full size. So let's take a look at the uh, mini one first, and then we'll take a look at the full size and talk about those extra features here in the second part of the video. First off, on the on both these stacks, they do come with this. Looks like a little piece of PCB that has um, all of the solder points labeled. And on the other side of this, it does show you uh, this one has all the various UARTs here. So it has six UARTs uh, as a F7 should, and it has some of these are dedicated. For example, UART4 is dedicated to ESC telemetry, and uh, UART1 is for SBUS. I think they misspelled that. They're missing a B there after the dot. And then UARTs 2, 3, 5, and 6 are completely vacant and available for a variety of different devices. But I do like the fact that this is included here. You can just overlay this and you can clearly see uh, what all of the different devices, uh, where all the devices should connect to. Things that you should note here, um, like UART 4 is going to be over here in these four in the corner. Uh, then over here on the left. You have 5 volts ground and camera, so that's going to be uh, for your FPV camera. Then right below that is going to be the connections for your video transmitter. And then right below that are going to be connections for your receiver. So you have ground, 5 volts, PPM, SBUS, and RSSI. And then over here on the bottom is going to be UARTs 5 and 6. So you have ground, 5 volts, TX, and RX for both of those. So those could be for like Crossfire, for example, or GPS. And then the two bigger holes here on the right next to the standoff which is going to be right there. It's 
I think uh, it's, that's uh, ground and a VCC, so I suppose you could power the flight controller off of a maximum of 6S light bulb voltage through that, those two pads if you wanted to. And then the three over here on the right below the USB port is going to be for your LED, and then the two above the USB port is going to be for your buzzer. And then right over here, this label has a label for all the connections on the micro JST connector there. That is, you got your buzzer, uh, plus minus ground, VCC. You have one um, uh, motors inputs one, two, three, four, and then you have RX two for USC telemetry, and then the current sensor is on the bottom. Okay, so here's a look at the ESC. It's a DSHA 1200 ESC. Uh, outputs 30 amps, max is, uh, bursts to 35 amps, and the input voltage is 3 to 6S, or 12.6 to 25 volts. It does look like there's a little bit of conformal coating here on the underside, so that could be useful if you're flying in like uh, areas that have some condensation, like red grass, for example. And uh, notably, there are uh, through holes here for soldering if you want to solder instead of using the wiring loom instead. So that's something I guess if you want, to, if you happen to get this ESC as a separate ESC and want to use a different flight controller, for example. Okay, so here's a uh, quick weight measurement. Obviously, with the included mounting options, it's coming around 12 grams. Okay, so I just want to show you the underside of the flight controller and the top side of the ESC. You can see the Pretty large, I think these are the MOSFETs there. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna be able to focus on those or not. And then you got your F7 chip over here. You have uh, the black box chip, uh, 16 megabytes of black box data available. And then your voltage regulator down to the side as well, as well as the MPU 6000 gyro. It's not a 32K gyro, it's just an 8K gyro. And the uh, voltage regulator is five volts up to two amps, just like on the previous version. And I think that is pretty much it. See the other side here, the OSD chip on the top side. You can see the uh, wooden there and some LED indicator lights and the arrow pointing to orientation forward. And yeah, it's pretty much it. Like you can see that they have all these um, soft mounting options here, including the, the silicon grommets and the uh, mounting holes on the flight controller. So hopefully this will have uh, less noise issues in terms of vibration compared to the previous uh, version of the F4 version. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, full-size version. This is a 30 by 30, not the 20 by 20. And again, it comes with the PCB here with everything labeled. And this should indicate here on this side, the six UARTs. So we see here we have UART 1 for SBUS. 2 and 3 are open. And then UART 4 is for Bluetooth, and that's for the built-in SpeedyB Bluetooth um, adapter. So instead of it something you have to um, solder on separately. It's actually built into the board and you can actually connect to the flight controller um, via Bluetooth on your phone using the Speedbe app, or, which is like a uh, app you can download to your smartphone from the uh, Play Store, or I think they also have that on iOS as well. UART 5 is open and then UART 6 is for ESC telemetry. And again, everything should just line up here as to um, what is what. And by the way, I will also include the um, the very large wiring diagrams for both of the stacks and the end of the video so you guys can just look at those if you happen to wonder um, want to look at some examples of how to wire up this uh, board to certain peripherals and uh, yeah pretty much everything here is nicely labeled now unlike the mini one the this full-size one does have uh, you can see here they're also labeled on the board itself so you have your connections here for PPM and SBUS over here. Um, you have ground 5 volts and TX2 RX2. This is UR2 here. And then you have two buttons here on the flight controller. The top button here is your boot, boot button or bootloader button to get it to DFU mode. And the bottom button there is for changing colors on the LED. There's a built-in LED controller. And on all four corners of the board here, you can see these three pins. Those are going to be for the special LEDs um, that uh, can be controlled by this board. And I actually didn't get those, so I basically just you just sawed up three connections here, five volts ground and LED, and there's like a little LED strip between your arms, and uh, you can actually you know light up your drone using uh, various colors, and then you could change those via this button here. I believe the Diatone had a video up on their Facebook page that showed how to do this. It's basically you change the button and it just changes colors. It's kind of interesting. Um, 
Now uh, right here on the bottom of the board, the bottom side here, we have RSSI, TX4, RX4, you have ground 5 volts, and then TX5, RX5, so it's UART4 and UART5 here. So it's interesting that the UART4 is broken out here when that's actually taken up by the Bluetooth adapter, which is built in, so I'm not sure how useful that is. And then you have UART6 over here, TX6, RX6. The antenna, as you can, I don't know if you can see that there, they'll kind of look like a... It's a little covered up squiggly line. That is the antenna for the Bluetooth adapter that's actually built into the flight controller, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so over here on the right side of the board, you got your USB port, of course. You have 9 volts out, so and 5 volts out there. So the uh, pin on the top left is 5 volts, and the pin on the uh, right there is 9 volts. So there's a 5 volt 2 amp regulator and a 9 volt 2 amp regulator on this board, and so. This the 9 volts going to be for certain cameras and video transmitters where you want to provide higher voltage. It actually uh, helps with video noise. And then you have TX3 for smart audio, and that's video out uh, from the OSD to your uh, video transmitter. Okay, so here's the top end of the board, and you have your ground and VCC pins right there, kind of tucked behind this little connector. It's a little hard to see there. Then you have all your connections here. Let me actually flip this over so you can see instead of being up to, upside down. You've got your connections here for the plug, so you have your current sensor, RX64, ESC telemetry, then you have ESC4321, so those are all, those are all the connections for this. And then you get your buzzer connections there, and then this is where your camera comes in. And it looks like for the camera, it looks like it's 9 volts only. And obviously for most uh, cameras, 9 volts should be fine, unless you're using like a nano type camera or something that's off of like a whoop or something that will only take 5 volts. And that might be a problem, but when this thing is going to be more for 5 inch and up, so this is going to be your camera camera, camera connections right here. So again, this does come with the MPU 6000, does not come with a 32K gyro, and does not come with a dual gyro like oh, some other F7s do. 16 megabytes of black box data, and OSD chip. And the EC here is again a DSHOP 1200 EC. It outputs 50 amps, I believe it bursts to 60 or 65 amps. 4 to 6 S input here, not so we'll not do 3 S, that's 16.8 to 25 volts. And then this is the size of the board here, it's, it's a 30 by 30, or 30, 30 and a half by 30 and a half size board. Okay, so taking a look at the underside of the flight controller there and the top side of the uh, 4 in 1 EC, and pretty large looking MOSFETs there, and you have a current sensor there as well. It does look like, again, the bottom side of the you see it has a little bit of conformal coating there. Should help with minor splashes of water. And then here's a look at the flight controller. Again, it looks like here some of the solder points are labeled on the underside. Okay, so and here is the weight of the larger stack, and I should put the standoffs back on there. And with the mounting stuff, it's coming in around 21 and a half grams. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video covering the two new F7 Mamba stacks. I will probably be doing a build on the mini version first and then do the uh, full-size version a little bit down the road. I haven't decided on what to put the this one in here, but I'm thinking probably something that's going to use at least a GPS. So I'm probably going to put this into the uh, IH4, the 4-inch build. Sort of a light build there, and it's going to have a GPS and should be uh, long flight times with like a, I'm thinking like a 1505 motor or something like that. Anyway, I um, haven't fully decided yet, but if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.